Hello. So welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're watching the videos. Um, today I'm going to be doing the fifth entry or the fifth section part type situation. Um, I also just wanted to say my last video, I thought that it was um, a year between the two entries, but it was not a year between the two entries. I just wrote 20, I, I wrote 2016 on accident, but it was 2017. Like you could see my entries before were 2017. So I know it was 2017. Um, but I wrote, for some reason, I wrote 5816. Um, but it was really 2017 at that point because both entries on either side are 2017. So just wanted to clear that up really quickly. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. But it doesn't really matter that much. Anyways, um, so this one, it doesn't have a year. I want to block out the name out of respect, but it's September 21st. Um, and I didn't write the year, so weird. Anyways, <clears throat> let's get started. September 24th, or September 21st. No transformation yet. Little black bird and I broke up. I said I felt powerful because I did not need him. I allowed this power to leave me as I fell in love with him. I fell in love with his voice and his hands wrapped up in my hair and around my thigh. I fell in love with his laugh, his smile, and the way he said my name. When he walked away, he said he was doing what was best for me. I made myself need him. I made myself crave him. It was almost as if I was rewarding myself for letting someone in again. The last person I loved was Redemption. Redemption never even pretended to love me back, besides when he was slipping his hands down my waistband. Little black bird would call me every night. I would fall asleep to the sound of his voice. His chest was the easiest place to rest my head. He redefined the meaning of falling in love. When asked if we had been together yet, he replied, it's not about that with her. Um, I love her. He was mine and I was his. That was the best feeling in the world. Oh, the sun is coming out. I love you, sun. Um, that was the best feeling in the world. Losing him was the worst. I feel numb again. Weed makes it better. It burns my throat, but it makes me feel alive. Everything feels vibrant. It doesn't erase him from my mind, but it makes my heart stop aching for a moment. I think I should talk to someone. I feel like my own mind is my worst enemy. And I've said a lot about happiness being an emotion and not a destination. But I don't feel that emotion very often. I miss being happy. My ambition is missing and it scares me a lot. I should tell my mom, but I don't want to have the conversation with her. Depression, maybe. I don't want to self-diagnose myself, but this just doesn't seem like how life should be. I've been biting my nails, down to the nubs pretty much. I don't bite my nails anymore. Woo, woo, woo. That's a win. Okay. I have this image of who I wish, and wish is underlined. I can't see anything, so I don't know. Of who I wish I was. But it's like every day I'm falling further and further from who I wish I was. Today is the last day of summer, I guess. School has been going on since the beginning of the month, and I'm already falling behind. I feel like I'm drowning. I see these happy and beautiful girls and I wonder if they cry themselves to sleep too. I wonder if they grab at themselves in the mirror and beg God to change the parts they hate. Also, um, I gained a lot of weight, a lot of weight after I broke, we broke up. He broke up with me. But I gained a lot of weight after that and it made me really insecure as well. Um, also, if you do feel like you're overweight, please, I beg you, please do not put your worth in what your body looks like because bodies change and they're just bodies and bodies grow and shrink and stretch and like all kinds of things and we're so strong because our bodies can handle them all and we bounce back and it's incredible. So that's a side note, but please don't judge yourself because then it'll be impossible for you not to judge others. If you're judging yourself, you're supposed to love yourself. Anyways, sorry. I wonder if they would rather drink and smoke than think about their lives. 
how, how are we all getting so good at looking okay? Is it just me? Is it just this ghost town? My age? My school? All question marks. Is everyone hurting just like me? With a question mark. And I don't have any names on this page, and it, I can see now. So that's what that page looks like. Um, we're sad. Okay. November 11th. November 11th, 11-11. This is when 11-11-21 was when my first song came out. And 11-11-22 is when my next song, Shlevely, comes out. So I love 11-11. I love November 11th. Um, anyways, this was 2017, I think, still. But no date on the page. Just November 11th. Heartbreak never ceases to amaze me. How could one person mean so much to me and I be so insignificant to them? I don't care much. I don't care about very much these days. I have disappointed too many people to take it to heart anymore. I no longer fear death. Life feels like an obligation, like I owe it to my parents to wake up every day. I write poems that more closely resemble suicide notes. Trigger warning, everybody. I'm very depressed at this age. I feel like I have to constantly reassure people, like my sadness is too big a burden. I do love these people. My family. Oh, I wish I could say these names, but I haven't asked them, and I don't know what they mean. But I say two of my closest friends at this age one of them was my roommate in California um, and one of the first people I met in Sault Ste. Marie and one of them um, was Little Blackbird's big sister who also lived with me when I lived in Sault Ste. Marie for a little bit and is just I she, oh I love this woman so much but I named those two and I don't I didn't look up what their names mean yet um, so I'll just, that's all I'll say about them. But they deserve to be mentioned because I love them. And I, I was mentioning them out of love here. Said I do love these people, my family, those two women. I don't even really know what love is anymore. I can grasp love and happiness when I'm high. But my parents don't want me to smoke anymore. I got my blood drawn last week. And my results came back yesterday which with THC in my system. I haven't smoked since Sunday. Today is Saturday. Six days. Nothing to make me happy. Trapped in my own mind with my worst enemy, myself. I love my parents, but I will not stop smoking for them. <laughs> Sorry, Mom and Dad. Um, I think I said that to their face, too, when they found out. I was a little rebel. And also, I'm starting to sweat because my car is a little hot. Um... Cause she's so cute, she hot, she hot. Sorry, sorry. Um, I love this boy that is no longer in my life. What a cruel punishment for loving someone. Also, that is literally how Yeshua feels about his siblings. Like he chose us already. He sacrificed for us already. And he already chose us and he already loves us. But so many people just don't even know who he is you know and if they do know who he is they know the perverted version of him and who could love the perverted version of him the one that condemns people that's not him that's not Yeshua that's man-made that's man-made and so I love this boy that is no longer in my life what a cruel punishment for loving someone I can't delete our pictures. I still watch videos so I can hear his voice. I, re I reread old journal entries. I don't know why I torture myself with these memories. I'm kind of a B I T C H. And I underlined that too. I said, I'm kind of a. I wish I could fast forward. I don't want my life anymore. I don't like myself. I have lost everything I was passionate about. I love poetry. That's about it. I want to be more than painfully mediocre. That is not spelled right. I can no longer different I can no longer differentiate 
the feelings of sadness, tiredness, and numbness. This is starting to seem like the longest suicide note ever. Maybe it is. Oh, so sad. Because I did think about I did think about this book as the as like when I die this is going to be the note that I leave behind, you know? And so it's and just wait because it gets so crazy and cool. Like the ending is just beautiful. So bear with me. And then this might be the last one I have time for in this video, but this one is crazy. This one is so crazy because this was right after I went to New York. And when I went to New York, um, when I went to New York, we went to the Met and that was, it was, I didn't even think, I, I don't even really knew, I didn't really even know what the Met was until we went there. And it was where I fell in love with art. And this next entry is um, on the 26th of November and um, my Met ticket was 11.22 and 11.22, 11.11.22 is the day that Schlevely comes out and it was the day that I fell in love with art or the ticket number of the day, I don't know, but it's amazing and beautiful so that's super cool. Anyways, um, so 11.26.2017, wow. We are 11 months into 2017. This year has been the craziest for sure. So much has happened and changed since the beginning. This entry is not really a recap though, not of the whole year anyways. I got back from New York last night. Oh, okay, so I wrote this on 11-26 and I put and I put my Met ticket in there. And when we went back to the Met this time, we went on June 4th and the ticket was June 4th, which means 11-22 was the day that I went to the Met, November 22nd. And that makes sense. And that's crazy because 11 11-11-22 is the day that my song comes out. Okay, that's cool. Um, I just got back from New York. I love that city so much. I really want to go to NYU. I'm going to try. There is an unspoken beauty about that city. It moves like machinery. I sat in a window two stories above the streets of East Harlem and fell in love. The streets are filled with culture and music and stories. There are so many people that all have their own personally complex and intricate lives. See, there's my timer, but I'm gonna finish. I feel like there is so much more I have to see, learn, and experience there. I went to the Met, and the people who were fixing their eyes on these masterpieces were just as beautiful and complex as the art itself. It's so true, though. I went back on, on the 4th, and it, it, it's so true. The people who are there... You, you look at the art and it's breathtaking and then you watch the people watch the art and it's just as breathtaking. It's beautiful. Anyways, I feel that there is only a split sec. I feel like only a split second was spent in the city. That's why I have to go back. As silly as it may be, New York makes me feel both significant and ex insignificant. Significant because I feel like my eyes are open and I can see and feel the world in a much bigger way. Insignificant because I am only one out of millions there and billions in this world. I've been thinking a lot about life and death lately. I don't want to expand much on that statement. The reasoning is slightly confusing. My thoughts on this subject are hard to put into words. They are mostly feelings. I have been feeling a lot lately that this world belongs to me. That sounds crazy. Like put me in a cushioned room crazy. <laughs> I know. I can't help it though. My mind is the only one that I will ever know. My eyes are the only eyes I will see through. It almost feels as though everyone in the world is just a pawn in my own game. See, this is still toxic. I'm still toxic. I don't become not toxic until the end of this book. Like, literally. The, 
the death of my toxicity happens on the last page of this book. But I'm toxic all the way through this. So take this all with a grain of salt. I don't even know what that saying comes from. But I don't know. Um, it's like I'm writing a book and I'm the main character. Maybe I've just been smoking too much weed. That's what I said. Maybe I've just been smoking too much weed. Probably for a child. Definitely, I should not have been smoking so much weed. I was a baby girl. I was a baby. Now I've got my med card and, you know, take it as you will. Um, this does sound crazy. That boy I am in love with, Little Blackbird, um, isn't really out of my life. Because we were like, we we were like confused we were in a toxic relationship for the like the year after we broke up like just on off maybe no yes no maybe i love you i hate you blah 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 like that's what it was like um so i said that boy that i am in love with isn't really out of my life it is very confusing i love him a lot but the more i think about him but the more i think about it i may only love who he used to be We've been talking, short, insignificant, dry conversations. Everything seems so messed up. If we did date again, would it be like this or would it go back to him loving me? Was it ever even love to begin with? We are back to me wanting to fast forward everything. Oh well, we'll see. So then that's what that looks like. And yeah, the next entry is January 16th, 2018. So right 16 days into 2018. Um, and yeah, the interesting part about this, where we are now in the journal, is that I was active on YouTube. Um, I was posting videos during this time of my life. So if you guys really did want to look back and like, see who I was presenting on social media versus what I was thinking. That might be cool. You could do that. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, I think I'm going to be doing a video every day for the next couple days until my birthday. So keep up if you want to see them. If not, that's okay too. I love you guys. And I can't wait to see where this goes and what this turns into but thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me and for listening and for caring if you made it to the end of this video you're a real one i, I see you baby i love you and um yeah i love you guys all so much you mean the world to me and if you ever need anything i beg you to contact me no matter who you are and i will do my very best to be there for you and I'm, I, when I say I do my best, I mean my best is pretty decent, okay? So I'll do my very best. And I love you guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll see you later.